You've decided to buy a new car. That's great. Yeah, well, my parents are going to let me use some of my savings, and what with the money I saved up this summer, I've got $1,700 in all. I was real excited about it at first. Well, you don't sound very excited about it now. Well, it's just that I've looked at so many cars, and everybody's giving me advice. Mm -hmm. Buy a Chevy. Fords are the best. Never buy a foreign car. Watch out for a lemon. You can't trust used car salesmen. I'm at the point now where I'm so confused, I don't know which way to go. Well, maybe I can help you look for something. I mean, after you've decided what you have in mind. I mean, I'm no mechanic or anything like that, but remember that course that I took down at the Y in Auto Mechanics? They told us some pretty good things to look for when buying a new car. What's a good buy in a used car? And how do you find it? The first thing to consider is how much you can afford to spend. And when you're deciding this, don't forget to consider the added cost of taxes, title fees, licensing, small repairs, finance charges, and insurance. A car that is three or four years old could cost as much as $150 or more on top of the basic purchase price when you consider these added costs. Check your county assessor's office and the Department of Motor Vehicles for information about the cost of registering and licensing a car you're considering buying. The county clerk can help you check on the ownership of the car at the same time. It is important to check on the ownership to avoid buying a stolen car or one that is about to be repossessed. It's a good idea to consider what you need in a car before you think about what would be nice to own. Advertising tends to stress what a car will do for your image, and a Corvette certainly is good for most people's egos. But if you need room to carry your teammates or don't have unlimited money to spend on gasoline and insurance, it may not be right for you. When you've decided on the kind of car you're looking for, the next problem is finding it. You may know people who trade cars every few years and take good care of their cars. By watching for such a car owner, you can often find yourself a used car in very good condition. But what if you don't know anybody? You've heard all the jokes about used car dealers. What do you look for? There are few things more frustrating than finding out your almost new car is unsafe at all speeds. You should begin by calling your Better Business Bureau to check on dealers you're unfamiliar with. The Better Business Bureau can tell you of any complaints they've had about a particular dealer. Hey, how about this one? Oh, the body doesn't look too bad. I really like the color on it. Mm-hmm. Um, this car has had an awful lot of hard use from the looks of the upholstery. The foot pedals, look how worn they are. It looks like you're going to need new tires, too, to pass the safety inspection. That sticker's out of date. Bald spots on a tire mean they need balancing. Any uneven wear may indicate the car needs a front-end alignment or new shocks. You can measure the amount of tread left with a gauge designed for this purpose, or an ordinary dime can be used to make an estimate. Place the dime in the tread with Roosevelt's head first. The tread should come up to at least the top of his forehead to pass safety requirements. Look for cracking on inner sidewalls of the tires and check for signs of leaking brake fluid on the insides of the wheel. While you're checking tires, also check the exhaust system for signs of rust. Excessive soot that is black and gummy in the tailpipe may indicate the car needs major engine repairs. While you're down on your hands and knees, Check the fender walls and underbody for signs of rust. Check the shocks for wear and for signs of leakage. The mileage on the odometer cannot be tampered with legally, but it still may be misleading. The kind of use a car has had makes more difference than actual miles. With good care, some cars will serve you for over 100,000 miles. A used car with an average of 10,000 miles for every year of its age may give you no problems for three or four years if it has been well cared for. But be extra careful when checking over a car with over 60,000 miles on it. Major repairs could be needed. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wish I could find hey, if you girls are looking for something to drive to school, this is a really nice little car. Gets good gas mileage. Oh, the engine looks really clean. Dirty engine is a bad sign, but it's pretty easy to steam clean engines and use a little black paint to touch up the hoses to make them look new. 
These hoses look pretty good. They're not cracked, they're flexible. Sand belt looks good. Our auto mechanic told us to check the oil for density. Thick gooey oil that hasn't been changed for a long time is a sign that the previous owner didn't take very good care of his car. This looks okay though. Would you like to see how it runs? have some problems, but even if it didn't, we should shop around a little bit, not buy the first thing we see. Well, how do you like the car? Or which one of you is buying? Me, but I'm not sure this is what I want. Well, this car is basically pretty sound, and since it's an older model, I can make a few good deal with you girls. In fact, since you girls are so cute, I can knock a few dollars off for you. You may get a good used car from a private owner who advertises in the paper, and it may cost less than through a dealer. Be sure the private owner furnishes you with service records and proves ownership. Keep in mind, you usually accept any used car as is, so be extra cautious. An individual may be more likely to treat you unfairly since he or she has no business reputation to maintain. New car dealers may offer better used cars since they sell less desirable ones at car auctions. Plus, a new car dealer or a reputable used car lot can offer you a 12-month or 12,000-mile warranty. Be sure to check over the warranty thoroughly. Some only cover one-half the cost of repairs for a short time. When you find a car that passes your inspection, either from a private owner or on a lot, ask to road test it. Without a thorough road test, you can't be sure of what condition the car is in. Ask a friend who knows something about cars to help you road test the car. Hey, here's the owner's manual. Hmm. During the test drive, step on the brakes to see if the car pulls to one side. Have a friend follow you to check wheel alignment. Turn the wheel left and right while on a smooth road to check wheel bearings. Make several stops and starts at different levels of acceleration. If the car has an automatic transmission, listen to see if it shifts smoothly. Driving the car over some rough road may help you detect problems with the suspension or fittings. This VW really drives nice, and it's the first car we've seen that's passed all your inspections. Was it shifting smoothly? Before driving the car, check the oil coolant, and brake fluid levels, and check them again at the end of the test drive. If the car has an automatic transmission, smell the transmission fluid. If it smells burnt or looks very dark, be careful. You may find problems. Well, we've seen a few pretty good cars, I think. You know, I really like that uh, Camaro from the private owner, but it did need a new battery. Do you think it's worth $1,700? I mean. I really did like that VW, too. Well, we ought to check at a loan department at some bank. They've got a book that'll give us some idea of the car's value. Now, insurance shouldn't be too high on a small car. Battery isn't too expensive. We better take some time and look some more, though. Okay. You can often see signs of an accident if you look down the sides of the car for ripples or signs of body putty to cover rust spots. Some good body work can make a lemon look like a peach, so be alert. To detect a repainted car, lift the hood and check for signs of overspray. Also, rust or places where the paint has dripped may be seen around the molding and the head and tail lights. Also look for two different tones of paint. Open the trunk. Here again, you may see signs of a repaint job. At the same time, you should check the spare tire. Check the trunk for cleanliness. Still another sign of a car that has been well taken care of. Well, this is it. This is the car I want. It does seem like a pretty nice car, and it's within your price range. Let's take it over to the mechanic and have him check it out, just, just to make sure. 
Okay, how much will that cost? Well, it may cost a few dollars. I think he charged me $14, but it's really worth it. That way we can find out if anything's wrong and how much it's going to cost to have it fixed. Maybe we can talk the dealer into fixing anything that, that needs it, and maybe we can even talk him into lowering the price. While he's checking out the car, we can go over to the bank and find out the blue book value of the car, price insurance, and we'll find out if we need to borrow any money to buy the car. Okay, hey, you've been a really big help. Thanks for coming. Now you can walk home. When inspecting a car, you would want to look in these areas. This is the transmission for excessive oil leakage, which you have some on this car. You'd want to check the exhaust, which is this head pipe right here. Make sure it isn't rusted through or leaking exhaust fumes. This is the bottom of the pan on the engine. Make sure there isn't a bunch of oil hanging off of that. Also, this is the bottom of the shock right here. Make sure there isn't a bunch of oil dripping off of that, indicating a bad shock. And you could look over here into your ball joints to make sure that they don't have broken seals or excessive play in them. You'd also want to check the seals, the dust caps, make sure they're not missing or loose. The steering gear box, which is right up in here, make sure there isn't excessive oil leakage or looseness. This car has a leaking power steering line, which is this right here, which should be replaced. You could also examine the radiator, which is right here, to make sure it's not leaking along the bottom. The leaks usually show up in this area here with dampness. This one here seems to be in real good shape as far as this goes. Here at the tail end of the car, you'd want to check the shocks. This car has a leaky shock but you see oil hanging down here, that would mean you'd need to replace that shock. You might glance at the differential to make sure there isn't a bunch of oil leaks there. And over here we have the exhaust system, the tailpipe, and this is the muffler. Make sure there isn't holes burned in it or rusted out. Other than that, this car for approximately 70,000 miles seems to be in pretty fair shape as far as a used car would go. Whenever you finance a car, shop as carefully for good credit terms as you did on the car itself. Find out how much interest you'll pay, how much each payment is, and how long they run. Many car dealers sell financing and insurance, but you'll probably do better to shop around on your own. Well, Barb, you drive a hard bargain. We'll replace that broken jack you asked about, and you're ready to go. Your guarantee is here with your contract. And you'll need this to get your car licensed. 